When you use a softer pick material like nylon, the crunch of your attack isn't just determined by how much you mute and how hard you pick. Because whatever that pick looks like fresh from the bag, it won't stay that way for long. Here's a Dunlop nylon, also a slightly thinner pick. But this one has that thin edge on it. These nylon picks, especially when they wear away, they tend to develop kind of a, almost a, a shaved edge on it that gives you maybe a little bit more treble in the attack. And interestingly, nylon is a material that's softer and it will wear away compared to the blue chip, which is seriously abrasion resistant. I don't use them every day, but I will tell you personally, I have never seen this pick wear away, which is pretty amazing. And this brings us to a third characteristic, which is abrasion characteristics or wear characteristics. The pick's character can change as you use it. And in particular, as the edge of the pick wears away, if it's a softer or more abrasion prone material, you will get a scratchier and perhaps a little bit more treble infused sound. When played on edge, the darkness of the one millimeter nylon is offset by a layer of treble frequency energy, producing a dark tone with sparkle. This is the kind of upper frequency shimmer you might try to get with EQ, but now you can get it directly from your guitar. Thanks to nylon's softness, you'll hear this additional treble when just about any nylon pick abrades. The brightness of the abraded edge Jazz 3 is easily apparent. There's a lot more sparkle there. Let's pull up the difference curve. Now this is really interesting. The yellow area is the EQ you'd need to apply to the smooth Jazz 3 to give it the brightness of the rough Jazz 3. There's a small difference in the upper mids between 2K and 5K, but you can see that the effect of edge abrasion is very much a treble effect. That's the area above 5 kilohertz, and it's not subtle. From 5K to 10K, we're up about 5 dB, which is quite a bit. We know from our previous investigations that it's mostly harmonics that live up in this area. We don't know exactly why the roughness of the edge is exciting them in this way, but we can guess. Violinists use bowing to produce sustained vibration in the string. They do this with the help of rosin, which they apply to the bow to increase its friction against the strings. The way this works is pretty cool. The bow's stickiness lets it grab the string and drag it getting the vibrational wave going. But when the wave bounces back to the bow, it's moving the string in the opposite direction of the bowing motion. This breaks the frictional hold and snaps the string suddenly back. This process of grabbing, breaking free, and grabbing again is what acoustic researchers call stick and slip mechanics. It creates a sawtooth wave, generating the harmonics that give the violin its characteristic bright tone. The stick-slip ability of the bow to transfer continuous energy to the strings lets violinists produce enviably loud and powerful sound with seemingly no effort at all. And it could be that the jagged edge of an abraded pick functions in a similar way, causing tiny disruptions that generate harmonics. We'll leave that question to the actual scientists to figure out. But if the roughness of an abraded surface can add treble harmonic energy, then we can guess that a smoother surface may do less of this. And that may explain why picks made from harder materials with a more glass-like finish can sometimes have a reduced harmonics kind of sound. Blue chip picks are a good example of this. They're made from Vespel, which is highly abrasion resistant. You can see some hairline scratches on this used pick, but they're so small that you can't feel them and the edge still feels perfectly smooth even after pushing around some heavy acoustic strings. Vespel is also a self-lubricating plastic, meaning that it releases a microscopic film which coats the surface. Players sometimes report a tackiness which helps their grip, which may stem from this lubricating effect. 
but when it comes to pick-on string contact, it's not grippy at all, but instead very slippery. When played on edge, the TD40's 351-style point geometry produces the expected bass tilt, but thanks to the slipperiness of Vespel, it does so without the upper frequency harmonics of a higher friction material. Super dark, right? Totally, de almost devoid of treble. Very dark. Would be a great sound if you're looking to round off the, the treble without having to touch your tone controls. Here it is. Right? So what's causing this? Well, you've got this heavier gauge pick with a rounded over edge and a 351 style rounded over point, and that's going to give you serious bass tilt when you use edge picking. On top of that, the Vespel material is very slippery, and that tends to make the pick slide over the edge of the string pretty easily. And it gives you that very lovely dark kind of sound, and it's useful for when you want that. By contrast, pick materials with a higher friction, grippy surface will produce more treble response even when played on edge. The Ibanez elastomer loses energy in the upper mids, but instead of sounding completely dark, it's generating high frequency harmonics, producing a dark sparkle similar to the nylon. We can see the dark sparkle clearly on the difference curve. That's this boost here, above 5 kHz in the treble region. It's so uniform, it almost looks like an EQ boost, but it's not. It's the effect of the elastomer's grippy surface texture, exciting higher order harmonics in the string. The Vespel's more slippery surface doesn't do this, hence it's more rounded over sound. So when we talk about the tonal effects of abrasion, we're really talking more generally about surface texture. And we're learning that picks with a higher friction surface can produce these more sparkly harmonic sounds. True Shell is a fender material that attempts to imitate the texture of the original Holy Grail pick material, the shell of the Hawksbill Sea Turtle, which was famous for precisely this type of textured string feel and high harmonics sound. True Shell does have a slightly sandy feel on the string, and when played on edge, it too lands in the dark sparkle ballpark. Dunlop Tortex, one of the most popular imitation turtle shell materials, has a slightly smoother but still textured string feel and also dark sparkles on edge. As does this Clayton Jazz 3 style acetyl pick, which also has a gritty string feel. As a point of comparison, Dunlop's yellow Ultex has a textured surface, but it's finer with a smoother string feel and doesn't produce as much harmonics as the Turtles. Because it's not generating as much treble, the chirp of the material becomes more audible as it clicks against the strings. The true shell and the acetyl of the Clayton are also chirpy materials. But that sound is being masked somewhat by the extra treble they generate. And of course, the trick with all these surface textures is that what they sound and feel like brand new can be quite different from what they sound and feel like once they start to wear away. As an example, I've got two Jazz 3s here. One is pretty much fresh, and this one here is ever so slightly worn away a little bit. And if we place this up against the side of the string, and I move it around, it's pretty smooth. You don't really hear anything at all. But this, aha, I think you can hear that. I hope you can hear that. It sounds like... A little, just a little bit of scratchiness, whereas this is almost nothing. So we just play single notes.
I don't know if you can hear the difference in the attack through the recording, but when I play this, there's definitely a difference in feel. That's definitely smoother to the touch. Versus. Feels smoother, and I think sounds a little bit smoother. Unfortunately, abrasion is a fact of life, and you may have a pick that you really like when it's fresh out of the bag, but then after a week of playing it, you find that it's become too scratchy for the tone that you're looking for, and that's the point when you throw the pick aside. In most cases, abrasion means becoming more scratchy in feel with even more harmonic content. Nylon is a textbook example. And so is the classic celluloid, which becomes notably scratchier. As does the Ultex used in Dunlop's Prime Tone Jazz 3. The acetyl of the Clayton pick goes from sandy to scratchy. One of the rare exceptions to the scratchy rule is Dunlop's Tortex which doesn't become noticeably jagged, and instead maintains, for the most part, its mildly sandy texture, even as it wears away. For players that don't like the sound of scratchy abrasion, a smooth abrading material like Tortex is a good choice. When we interviewed Temu Mentusadi, he discussed how he and his band Winter Sun handle Ultex abrasion. We like the the Altex 1.0 1, 1 millimeter. That's a Dunlop. That, that's a Dunlop. Yeah. Okay. This is like the what you normally get in <clears throat> what you normally get in yellow like this. This is just custom made. Same, same peak. And um, does that get uh, does the edge on that wear away over time? Uh, yes, it does. If if we're recording, you know, we use almost one per riff or so. Really. Yeah. Each each track or each take of right. the tune, you're, you're changing the pick. Yes. But but uh, you know. Live situation, it's it's still so so small detail that you can get away with the same thing. In addition to that, the abrasion produces sometimes a rounding over of the point of the pick that hasn't quite happened yet on this one. But here's a Dunlop Tortex Jazz Three, and I'm going to hold this up to see if we can see it. This one is definitely starting to round over at the point, and I have a fresh one here we can compare it with. Okay, see that the fresh Jazz Three is definitely a little pointier. And as this rounding over happens, the pick is basically becoming a rounder point pick. We looked at point geometry, we saw that rounder point picks can actually sound pretty different from pointy point picks when you use edge picking. So what this means is, if you use a certain amount of edge picking as part of your core technique, then as these geometry changes happen, there will come a point, pun intended, when you will no longer feel like you're getting enough of a pluck on the string, and that's how you know it's time to throw the pick out. These changes are more significant with softer materials like Gator Grip and Tortex also wears away pretty quickly, significantly changing the shape of the pick as it happens. To make matters more confusing, these abrasion-related shape changes can sometimes be a positive thing, improving the feeling of picking motion smoothness even when the material surface texture becomes more scratchy sounding. But it changes the feel a little bit when it starts to grab on uh, the A little bit as well. Right. The, the totally new pick is a little bit Maybe harder to play, but it has more crisp. And then after a while, you know, it gets smoother and a little bit smoother to play as well. What Timu is talking about are the flat spots that develop from edge abrasion. A fresh pick with a square edge profile can feel scrapey, especially on the lower wound strings. And will actually sound smoother once that edge starts to wear away a little. Even a pick with a rounded or slightly beveled edge will scrape louder than that same pick abraded. What's happening here is that a pick that abrades is wearing itself flat at the points where it contacts the string. If you play with leading edge picking, then the abrasion creates two flat spots, one on the leading edge treble side, 
and another on the trailing edge base side. If you play with trailing edge picking, the reverse happens. The flat spots occur on the trailing edge treble side and the leading edge base side. And there's another catch. Right-handed leading edge players get the same wear pattern as left-handed trailing edge players. And vice versa, left-handed leading edge players get the same wear pattern as right-handed trailing edge players. This matters because some picks come from the factory with this asymmetrical wear pattern already sculpted into the pick. If you choose a pick with this kind of pre-beveled wear pattern, you need to make sure you choose one that matches the handedness and the edge picking style you use. Whether you wear out your edges or buy them that way, this flat spotting can lead to a smoother feeling pick attack as the edge wears to exactly match your edge picking orientation. When you use a pick that has an abrasion profile to it that will abrade under normal usage, this is just a fact of life and there will be a life cycle to these things where you'll use them and like them for a while and then eventually throw them out. Even the blue chips probably at some point will abrade. I just don't know how long that would take. <laughs> Cracking the code viewers. You want to get better at picking technique and we'd like to help. You just watched an awesome new chapter of the Pick Slanting Primer, which now includes two hours of new material on pick design and function. Or you might say, how picks work. This is actually a really interesting and complicated topic, and we learned a ton just by filming this stuff and putting it into the product. In addition, the Pick Slanting Primer includes everything you need to know about pick grip, picking motion, string switching mechanics like pick slanting, and how to take all this stuff and organize your lines on the fretboard to give your picking hand the easiest possible time of it. How do you get access to all this amazing stuff? Well, it's so easy. Just head on over to TroyGrady.com. You can grab the Pick Slanting Primer as a download product, or even better, you can check out a subscription and you'll get access to the primer and everything else on the website. How cool is that? It could be one month, two months, no big deal. Get in, get better, get out. As always, it is your support that keeps us going, and we are eternally grateful that you watch our stuff and enjoy it, and most importantly, get better. So if you have a moment, head on over to TroyGrady.com and check us out. And as always, thank you for watching Cracking the Code.